welcome to the Battling Barrow. My name's Kev, and in this video, we're going to look at the Dragon Lance board game from TSR. So, when it comes to D&D uh, &D board games, uh, most people think of dungeon crawlers such as uh, Dragon Strike and the Fantasy Adventure board game, or cut down games based on the RPG rules themselves, uh, such as Dragon Quest or the Wrath of the Shards one, or the like. But there are other games based on the IP uh, that don't fall into these categories, and the Dragonlance board game is one such game. So let's take a look at its history and how it came about and what it's about. Dragonlance was published by TSR, the makers of the Dungeons and Dragons RPG, back in 1988, and it was designed by Michael S. Dobson, Scott Harin, and Warren Spector. The game is for 2-6 players and should take about an hour to play. The game itself is based on the Dungeons & Dragons Dragonlance campaign that was created by Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman. Each player takes control over an army of dragons and must search the land for the fabled Dragonlance, which resides on the top of a tower on the centre of the game board. The first player to take this Dragonlance and return it to their home base wins the game. Other players will be attacking your dragons and thwarting your efforts and can even steal the Dragonlance if you have it in your possession. Let's have a look of what is actually in the box. So this is what the box looks like and it is a fairly hefty box with it measuring about 22 inches, uh, 55 centimetres long and about a foot. Uh, wide, 32 centimeters, and it's about three inches deep, eight centimeters. Uh, just for comparison, uh, this is the silver tower box. People may recognise more, so you know, it's a hefty long box, and it's obviously deeper here than silver tower. Box has a uh, lovely uh, sort of background bit of text on here. Um, get set in the game. Uh, you can see it's quite thick here. Uh, unusual for a game of this time, especially in this country. HeroQuest did it as well, I guess, but a lot of time I'd always expect to have games with just nothing on the underside. Uh, but it has a nice visual representation of the board here. Um, again, a bit more background text and the contents here. So. Inside is just nothing there. No rules or anything or all the like. The board is mahusive. I don't think I'm gonna get it all in. But it's a so it's the same size as the box. Those measures, but it's triple. Triple gatefold. When you go and fold the board, this is what you'll see. It's a big old board triple gatefold board and uh, if I can hopefully you can see this you can see it's nice triple board really big you got a hole in the middle here with holes around here for a tower which we'll look at in a bit so what we have is different colored sections this will be the dragon starting spots we have red dragons here that will start here this orange here is actually bronze, that's where your bronze dragons start. Blue over here, silver down here, which looks grey white. Uh, off camera, I don't have to, be able to get it in because it's so big, is green, which is just here. Here we have yellow or gold, and that's where the dragons start. So that's the board, it's a very nice board, has the Dragon Lance logo in that here, and it reminds me of the War of the Ring board game. It has sections for cards. So we have our magic cards here, and then just one over here for discard. Uh, and then we're into the contents of the box itself. So what we have is two rule books. We have a uh, basic rules, which we'll look at how to play in a minute, but this covers the setup as well. Uh, and this is fairly basic, quick and easy to play, uh, but then you also get an advanced rules which uh, just adds a, another level to it. So in the advanced rules you have characters uh, that will uh, that represent their different dragons, the different dragon colours, um, and these 
we uh, are going to have to do, sort of do a duel, look at, because we have cards within the game. So, uh, and the characters are represented by some cards. So, Gilfinus will have the silver dragons, Kichara will have the blue, Lord Toke will have the green, Lord Gunfar uh, will have the gold, Tannis will have the bronze, and Verminov will have the red. You can see the artwork here, and each one gives a different bonus to the game plus two for combat. They make ranged attacks, always have at least one magic card, yada yada yada, that will affect the game. Uh, we also have the uh, in the advanced rules the flying citadels, which are these hexagonal tokens here, which are six hexagonal tokens. So if you look now, this is going to come across, but it is a flying citadel on a token, and these just just like different things. You have staff of the majors, shield of humor, uh, flute of wind dancing, hammer of Karas, uh, dragon armor, and the nightbringer mace. And they also have who can use them: evil, good, 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 evil, and so forth. So that's uh, so you won't use these in the uh, basic game, but you will get to use them in the advanced. Uh, you also have magic items, uh, which are these here. So you get a few of these. Uh, the card backs are all the same for this. That is a bit of a complaint. So you have your character cards, your magic item, your magic spells, and your magic items all have the same back, which is really annoying when you're trying to sort through them. So I tend to order them. So I have magic items, characters, and magic cards because then you can quickly easily get to which group you want to get to uh, there's no real art in them apart from maybe a little bit here which is similar to the uh, citadel tokens and you have some magic cards here which are used in the basic game and advanced game which and these will give you a bonus so you can cancel any other magic card here with this one fireball is plus six uh, combat bonus which we'll get to when we talk about the rules but also in the advanced rules, uh, you have optional rules for more realistic movement. This plays, on the basic game, plays out like a board game where you move your dragons any way you want to in the squares. Whereas this plays more like, uh, I don't know, mind you of X-Wing where you move, turn, and you're sort of having to... You can't just move into a square, you've got to sort of angle yourself around. So that's what the advanced rules do for you. So also in the game, uh, we have two dice, it, uh, two 10-sided dice. The game is D10 based. And we have six sort of sections of dragons. Uh, so you get to have uh, five dragons. So if we look at the uh, red dragon here, they are all the same sculpt and quite a cute sculpt. So we will uh, decide to uh, focus in on this. Are you... You're not going to do anyway. Hopefully, you can get enough of this. So, it's a little fairly cute dragon that's still going to focus in. Um, but anyway, so you get five dragons and five bases for the dragon to sit on so it flies. Uh, and these are useless because uh, if I was to now move it, the base remains there. So, they, they're not very good. Maybe get some blue tack in there just to hold it in place better that's what they are and we also have a, a gate of this corresponding color is where you need to fly under to get to the tower the tower itself is a uh, 3d molded plastic and it has some brickwork embossed onto it and it's made up it has a top that goes together hopefully last thing and quickly do it That'll do for now. So it goes like that. You have it like this. Oh, I've done it terribly, haven't I? Ta da! So it goes together like that. And then at the top, you plonk in the titular dragon lance. And so that is what everyone is after to win the game and get that back to your base. Um, also, in here, we also have these. These are little wall pieces from the outer wall of the tower. 
and on the board which we'll have a look at in a minute these uh, gates slot into the holes here and here and you have another gate fitting into here and a wall piece and that will form the outer wall and a flying in gate bit here and the last thing we should really look at is these things here these are look like casino uh, pieces uh, and what these are is these uh, are which denote how high you're flying so to begin with you start the game on ground level so you're just like this and if you want to get higher get some altitude put one of these under you and if you want to get even higher stick another one on and so forth and so forth and if you want to get lower you take one away and that's what these represent so they've got little bumps and holes in so they can uh, lock into place and I have a load of those uh, they fit into here but I have so many that I don't know if I've got extra if that's how it goes if that's, if that's how they wanted it but ho-hum that is the contents of the box now let's have a little look on how to play the game so this is the game basically set up with the tower in the middle uh, we form the fortress around here and we put all the different colored dragons on their little bases around the edge um the cards we are in the basic game which we'll look at quickly look at now we only use the magic cards they go here uh, the magic item cards and the character cards we don't use so i'll put them on the discard pile and these uh, tokens which are the uh, flying fortress tokens we don't use either so i'll put those to one side each player then picks their dragon horde they're going to be uh, if you're doing two or three player games uh, you'd pick two hordes but you'd have to pick opposite so one player would pick this blue horde here the other player would have to pick this one and if and then you'd pick another one so if the player picked the green which is off camera here terrible example <laughs> uh, the other player would be bronze so it'd be bronze and gold versus blue and green so that's that's interesting uh, two players it's the same apart from you'd pick three hordes so if I was going to pick, I'd probably pick silver, gold, and bronze just because they're good. Leave my opponent to be blue, green, and red. On a game turn, uh, each player can move, fight, and draw and play their cards, uh, and then capture the dragon lance. All movement points must be spent, and all other activities are optional um, actions can be done in any order movement is handled by rolling a 1d10 at the beginning of each player's turn so in this case I get a zero which is 10 and what that means is I then have 10 action points so let's say I am doing the blue dragons I can move for one or and I can move for two and I can do all my movement on one dragon or I can split it up so it'll be one, two, three, four, five. That'd be five movement points. I could move again each of my dragons. Um, and that would make make me allow me to spend ten action points. I can also gain or lose altitude uh, for one movement point. So I could move one. And let's say I wanted to go go high, I could uh go up one altitude I can get one of these tokens and that would allow me to that cost two movement points I'd move one and gone up likewise I can spend another point to go up and here's where the game really falls apart because these bases do not stay in very well but yeah I can go up one like so or two in this case that would have cost three movement points Likewise, if I was already up high and I wanted to drop, go lower, I could spend a movement point to go down one. Uh, there are illegal moves that uh, you can't do, such as no dragon may enter or move through a hex containing another dragon. So if there was this bronze dragon here, I couldn't spend one or two movement points to go through him like so. 
Another thing to note is you can only enter the tower via your coloured gateway, which is here when it's blue. Combat is handled uh, by you must be adjacent to the uh, dragon you want to attack, and you must also be at the same altitude. So here at the moment we couldn't attack the bronze dragon, but if I put give bronze dragon some altitude, we can now attack it. You cannot attack if you're at zero altitude or you're on top of the tower here. You can move and then attack or attack and move and this can be done in any order. Uh, the attacking dragon rolls 1d10 and then adds some attack modifiers. So let's roll for the blue. That'd be 9. The uh, defender rolls 1d10 and then adds any defense modifiers. So he would get an 8. Let's have a look at some of those modifiers now. Uh, there are three types. Movement. For every movement point spent uh, the attacker has used to move, you gain that as well. So if I had moved into a square, that would now become 10. Uh, if you have a Dragon Lance, you get to add 5 points. And Magic Cards will also uh, add different points. So this one here at random, that adds 6 to your combat die. So then um, what happens is the uh, losing dragon will drop by one altitude for every point that it loses the battle by. So in this case, we keep it simple and just use the nine and eight. Um, this dragon then has lost by one point, so it will lose one point of altitude. So now it's on ground level. If you drop to zero uh, or less as a result of combat, uh, it crashes and is out of the game. and. Uh, and once all your dragons are crashed, you lose. So in this case, I now, that bronze dragon is now out of the game. The courtyard must be entered through the gate of the same color. So in this case, blue dragon is gonna be entering through this blue gate. And only one dragon of any given color can be within this courtyard at any one time. A dragon must pass through the gate at altitude four. So we can see he fits in here nicely. Once they're inside this area, to get the actual Dragon Lance, uh, you need to be at altitude 10 to get to the top of this tower. So you've got to be using movement points once you're in to gain altitude to get it. And to leave, you can leave through any gate, but you still need to be at altitude 4. And you've got to get your Dragon Lance back to your base here to win the game. Once you've uh, captured the Dragon Lance, you remove it from the tower and you can then, there's a hole on the top of dra on the dragons that you can pop the lance into to indicate that your dragon now has the dragon lance. Uh, someone attacking a dragon with a lance can declare that they're trying to capture the lance instead of making a regular attack and this must be declared before the dice are rolled. The lancer gets an additional plus three to the defense in this case. The attack is handled in the same way as a regular attack if you, if you win this attack, uh, you take the Dragon Lance from the Defender and you become the Dragon with the Lancer. So if the Gold Dragon had won the combat, it would then steal the, the Dragon Lance and you put it on top and it would now be the holder of the Dragon Lance. So that's a basic overview of the basic rules, but there is uh, addition, uh, advanced rules here, which I won't go into now, but they add characters into it, uh, the floating systems, which add a bit of interest, uh, magic items and advanced movement rules, uh, that I guess make it, might even be familiar to games like X-Wing, I guess, where you're sort of spinning and rotating rather than just moving wherever you want. But that's the basic rules, which are fun in themselves. Yeah, so that is how to play it. But where do you get hold of this game? Being that it came out in 1988 and TSR is no longer a thing, the game is long since out of print and I can't see Wizards of the Coast uh, doing a reprint. But there are numerous copies of this on the secondhand markets such as eBay. And having a quick look for this video, they're around the £30 mark, which isn't too bad. And the lowest I found was about £25. There weren't any expansions to this uh, game, it was just a uh, standalone board game. So that is a look at the Dragonlance board game. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like. Um, if you've played this game before, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you thought of it, how it played, um, 
what you would do differently as any improvements could be made to the game if you haven't played it also let me know in the comments that you haven't played it and it, whether you would be interested in playing it or maybe seeing it played but that's it for this video uh, until the next one guys uh, stay safe and I'll see you next time